Okay, guys, let's start off doing this in our Great Man Explorer series, our Great Man Explorer series. Do you think there are any statues anywhere in the world honoring Ferdinand Magellan? He may be the most famous, so there's probably a statue somewhere in the world that honors this great man. Let's see if we can find it. Holy shit. Ferdinand Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan, Ferdinand, Ferdinand, uh, it's, oh no, it's doing it again. It, reality, it's trying too hard. It's doing it again. Ferdinand Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan. It's trying too hard, it seems, oh no, to make a presentation. See, when reality tries this hard to make a presentation, I'm suspect. Magellan statues all over the world on every continent. Here's a Ferdinand Magellan 3D model, if anybody's interested in that. Some of these statues I've looked at, pay, but what the hell is this? Kiss a, f a foot to prevent seasick. She's kissing Magellan's. Keep your foot fetish at home, honey. What the, some of these actually honor um, the, there's some sort of shrine where he was killed. Um, reality, mom. It's doing it again. What reality's trying too hard to make a presentation that we all Ferdinand Magellan images. It's trying to get us to buy into this too hard. Now there's two things going on. Sure, Matt, when a great man accomplishes things of this nature, he should be honored, and this makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah, but we've seen this too much. Reality seems to be trying too hard. He's. They're doing it again. First up in our Great Man Explorer series, one of your favorite explorers and mine, one of the most famous men of the second millennia, I give you, ladies and gentlemen, Ferdinand Magellan. Magellan, although the artist for some reason left out the D. It's a, there's a D. in Wic I know the D is silent, but the artist just left it out. What's that all about? Look at this handsome devil. Now, guys, I don't know what we'll find here. I don't know. I don't have time to go do a bunch of research if things aren't going to pan out. But see, I know not milk. I know the false reality. I know it's trick. I sense, I didn't spend any time on this, that this story, in my opinion, will, won't quite add up. When reality makes its presentation with too much vigor, too much Viagra, I can kind of sense it. You can kind of sense it. I'm not sure this will add up. Now, maybe again, I can't, I don't have the time to go do a bunch of research. Like, oh, eight hours of research wasted. This isn't going to work. We have to do this together on the fly. Maybe at the end of this, we'll say, well, this story makes perfect sense. It's not a not milk presentation. This man truly accomplished what they say. Maybe we'll, that won't be very exciting. That's no reality breakdown. That's not why you come to this channel. But if that's the result, that's the result. We have to do this together. However, I predict Not Milk will show its true colors again and sh shit will start to break down and we'll point at the screen and say, that's horse shit. I get the feeling this is not going to hold up. We'll see. I have no idea what's coming. Because everybody confuses the explorers, we need to get straight in our head what this guy did versus the others. I know it's very small. I'll read it to you. So a little bullet point overview so we can distinguish between this guy versus whatever Cortez did and Ponce de Leon and Rocky Balboa and all the other <laughs> explorers. So uh, Ferdinand Magellan, Portuguese, born 1480, died 1521, just age 40 or 41. He died in some sort of battle. I think he was trying to screw over the local Indian or indigenous population like they all do. We'll look at that in a moment. I forget, but he was definitely killed in a battle of some kind. Known for the Magellan Expedition, well, no kidding. He's known for finding the Strait of Magellan, which we'll look at. This navigable, if that's a world, waterway between the Atlantic and the Pacific that kind of cuts through Argentina and Chile. You don't have to go all the way around the tip. I mean, one might say, how could he possibly have found that? We'll, we'll look at that. He's known for naming the Pacific Ocean, first documented Pacific Ocean crossing, and leading the main part of the first circumnavigation of the... Oh, no. The splat turfers are going to be very upset. Leading the main part of the first circumcision navigation of the Earth. He went all the way around. Oh, he didn't hit no ice wall or nothing? And there's a signature. How'd they get his signature? 
the old paperwork st- still exists. And, and did anybody ever use that signature for identity theft? I'm Pazzo de Leon. You qu- I want these corduroy pants. You question me? I, I'm pa- I present the original signature. This guy, I, anyway, I don't, I don't suggest anybody try to take the signature. It wouldn't work out for you very well at the mall. Let's move on. Before we look at a replica of Magellan's ship, which is, of course, just made of wood from the 1500s or 1400s, this is what rough seas in the ocean can do to large ocean liners and cruise ships. It's no joke out there, guys. Let's get a taste of the violence that the sea can bring to large modern ships, tossing it around. Look at this guy. He's thrilled about what's about to happen. He's loving it. You're good, about to go under, sir. Look at this. The piano must be nailed <laughs> nailed down. Nothing else is. It's rough out there, folks, going across the Atlantic and the Pacific. I went out to research what the largest of ships look like today in the modern world, and I thought, this can't possibly be real. Is this like stable diffusion or Dalé or something? The Symphony of the Sea seems real. Uh, there's Wikipedia on it. It's not an AI image. Well, these things get thrown about out in the ocean. Let's see what Magellan was operating out of. Look at this piece of shit that Magellan supposedly sailed around the world in. This is a replica. It's not the real ship. It's supposedly a replica of the ship Victoria that Magellan used to sail around the world or whatever he did. And they usually sail with three or four other ships in case, I guess, one goes down. They can rescue each other. But look, look at this thing. What a piece. What did Michelle Pfeiffer say to Tony Montagna and Scarf? He pulls up in the in the big yellow <laughs> Cadillac and she's like, I'm, I wouldn't be caught dead in that thing. It's like, what you mean, baby? It's a, it's a Cadillac. It's a cream puff. And, and Michelle Pfeiffer said, it looks like somebody's nightmare. <laughs> what, I'll tell you somebody's nightmare if you got to sail around the world in that piece of shit. Now, look, I ain't no shipbuilding expert. Let's get one thing straight. I didn't design the Black Pearl for Captain Jack Sparrow. Savvy? I didn't. Okay, it's very round, which to me probably says um, buoyancy. Probably very hard to sink. But in terms of nautical miles, which are called knots, um, it does have to eventually get from point A to point B, a big old round thing that doesn't exactly carve through the waves, does it? I mean, does it, 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 they didn't say it took him 70 years. That would be more than his natural lifespan to get from point A to point B. Just something round, how does it cut through the waves? I mean, a styrofoam cup is very buoyant. I wouldn't design a styrofoam cup to circumnavigate the globe. I mean, it's rounded. Okay, I found this. This could be very useful in what we're looking at, or it could be entirely made up. Probably the latter. Christopher Columbus, they say, crossed the Atlantic at a speed of roughly four knots. That's four plus miles an hour. When the wind gusted, is that even a word, bot? He could hit 9.2 miles per hour in 1492. That was, okay, here's, the, here's another problem with the knot milk presentation. Too much detail. But nobody would have known the 9.2. Where'd the 0.2 come from? Christopher Columbus put a laser tachometer on the end of his boat and measured a 0.2. I mean, no, this is ridiculous. But, and I'm now speaking to whatever AI wrote this, if you want to be believed, whether you're lying to people or not, you don't put in details like 0.2. You don't understand that about humans yet, do you, Bot? You would say something like this, Bot, pay attention. Um, we believe, per experimentation with what we believe the design of Christopher Columbus' ship looked like, that with the right wind conditions, he could achieve in the neighborhood of nine miles per hour, or roughly this many knots. You leave it vague. See, bot? Nobody could know the point, too. You give yourself away. You should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, this is a replica of Christopher Columbus's ship. And I looked at a few other images. It seems a little bit more pointy in the front, like it could carve through the waves, but it's still relatively rounded. So Magellan's ship would have been slower, okay? It's because it's more rounded in the front. Again, I'm no uh, design architect for ships, but that's just common sense. Pointy to carve through, rounded, you don't really get anywhere. So on average, it said four miles per hour, four knots, whatever. Oh, 9.2 at the max. So Magellan's ship would have been slower. And also, you're not just going from point A to point B. Remember, guys, of course, on a straight line, uh, depending on the wind, you got, I don't know if there's a right nautical term, you got to tack up towards Greenland. Oh, shit, the wind changed. We got to tack down towards Brazil. Zigzag, zigzag. And then didn't anybody ever see Master and Commander, the movie? Sometimes the wind just stops. You just sit there for three days. So, oh, my goodness. 
I mean, how do you, considering you can't even go in a straight line, and considering you're averaging in Magellan ship three to four miles per hour, I mean, a snail can do that. How do you get to one place to another without all your lemons spoiling? It, uh, just keep this in mind as we move forward, guys. All right, he's known for finding or discovering the Strait of Magellan at the bottom of South America instead of having to go all the way around the, it looks says Paso de Drake, some dumbass explorer named Drake went all the way around out of his way. It probably takes seven years to do that. Um, you cut across. See, here's the Strait of Magellan. Came down here, goes up through here, goes up through here, and then you, boy, that saves a lot of time. Could you imagine? Now, here's the thing. Did he, how did he find it? <laughs> is it just dumb luck? Well, he's hugging the coast, hugging the coast. I mean, this is so wide, you wouldn't think land would continue, right? So he just hugged the coast. I don't know if you can follow my, my arrow there. Just dumb luck. We're going to keep hugging the coast. Let's see how he would do. Just dumb luck. Hugging the coast, hugging the coast. Keep hugging the coast, hugging the coast, hugging the coast. Look how lucky. Look how, that, look how effing lucky. I think it was dumb luck. But okay, they know these landmasses existed and there have been other explorers before. How do they even know? You'll see in terms of the story that Not Nelk presents later. He found these islands in the middle of nowhere. How would he even know how to navigate to them? How would he even know they're there in the first place? So, okay, let's say he should know, depending on, you'll see some of the remote places he finds magically later when we look at the story. He should know there's a whole nother, I mean, this is whatever, the size of Texas down here, not quite, but would be the size of, the state of Connecticut or something like that. So if he knows that the, the um, continent extends downward, then it's a big risk just turning up here. Oh, it'll go through. Well, how do you know, sir, it'll go through? Trust me. I got a good feeling about this, son of a bitch. Trust me. How would he, would, it, would the little indigenous people here that never left their home, more than, more than wandered five miles away from their home? Oh, hey, Magellan, trust me. Keep going. It goes through. How would you know? I think it's dumb luck. I don't, maybe he didn't know, uh, first of all, guys, look, I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt here. I'm highly skeptical. I hear you yelling at me. I'm obviously skeptical of everything or I wouldn't be making this presentation. I wouldn't have this channel if I wasn't skeptical of absolutely everything. So don't yell at me saying he's a made up figure. I, I, this isn't my first conspiracy video. I know all that shit's on the table. I put on the table, this whole reality's only been around 350 years. I don't, there's nothing that you can put by me that I would think is strange. Don't be screaming that at me. He might not have even existed. I'm well aware of that. Let's just go with it for now. For now, in our examination, we have to err on the side of pretending he was a real person, and then we'll go from there as we continue our exploration. So that being said, just dumb luck. You just, you just curve in here blindly, you know, dumbass sails, and just luck he can get all the way through the continent. Isn't that lucky? Oh, gosh, guys, I don't know. And why? We're going to talk about borders, national borders. The border of Chile comes, cuts over here, cuts off Argentina. It seems to have to encompass the entire Strait of Magellan, the border of Chile. But then, so this is Argentina here. Argentina then extends to this little part. Who set the border here right down the middle? How is it possibly agreed on? We're going to look at borders, as I've uh, alluded to, guys, a few weeks back, that the, the borders and the artificial nature of how this could ever happen, um, including you know hundreds of these examples, agreed upon borders, uh, gives away a one-world system. Quick overview from Wikipedia. Ferdinand Magellan, explorer out of Portugal, best known for having planned and led the 1519 Spanish expedition to the East Indies across the Pacific Ocean to open a maritime trade route during which he discovered the interoceanic passage, thereafter bearing his name, why not just say the Strait of Magellan? What's the matter with you, bot? And achieved the first European navigation to Asia via the Pacific. All that, huh? After his, you know what it's like being out there alone? After his death, this expedition was the first to circumnavigate the globe in 1519 through 1522. Oh, I see. After his death, the same group of people, or I guess on the same ships, they continued his work and circumnavigated, as it says here, the globe. The splat turf researchers are still pissed to this day. They say, no freaking way, man. All he did was hit the ice wall. Hell, he didn't circumnavigate nothing. All they did was hit that ice wall and turn around. I, look, I don't care about the shape. 
to me, that's part of the reality trick. I think we live in a very fluid reality. And if you're worrying about the physical shape, I think you're missing the point. I don't think it has a definitive shape. I think it shows each group of researchers what it wants to find. But we'll talk about that some other time. During this voyage, Magellan was killed in the Battle of Mok Tan, Mok Tan Island, now province of Cebu. Cebu group of islands in 1521. Oh, in the present day Philippines. That's another Ferdinand we know and love. Ferdinand Marcos. What's his wife's name that had the 40,000 shoes in the closet? Ferdinand and Magella. No, Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos. Two of the finer individuals, by the way, to ever lead the Philippines. They deserve our respect. After running into resistance from the indigenous population. See, here we go again. Not Nilk's script. Oh, problems with the indigenous. Screwing over the Indian indigenous population. It's always part of the script of every single explorer. The indigenous in this case was the Lapu 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 Lapu, who consequently became a Philippine national symbol of resistance to colonialism. Here's that's the script of today. Underneath the picture, guys, I didn't read it of Christopher Columbus's ship. Oh, backlash against anything Christopher Columbus. That's somehow they pull that script. Oh, they're all racist and they're all, oh boy. We'll, we'll look at that probably in a separate video. That script runs even through today. After Magellan's death, Juan Sebastian Alcano took the lead of the expedition and with its few other surviving members in one of the two remaining ships, they, of course, completed the first circumcision navigation of the earth when they re <laughs> returned to Spain in 1522. Maybe they just said they did it. How would anybody know? They don't got no video evidence. They don't got no video blog. So this guy, so Magellan's dead and a lot of them are dead. Juan Sebastian Alcano took the lead of the expedition. It says right here, with its few other surviving members, we got four guys to man the masts and, and two guys are cooks. One remaining ship. They, what they, they wanted to get paid. That's what happened. They pulled back in. Did you circumnavigate the globe? You better believe I did. Prove it. How you want me to prove it? We did it. Now believe me, pay me my money. Let's look more closely at this. <laughs> for a few minutes. There was a warning light and sound that went off here in the control room. You didn't hear it. was like, beep, bogus reality, beep, bogus reality, beep. I turned the, the light and the warning off so you didn't have to listen to that. Uh, so after Magellan's death, let me get this straight, and you're really smart. This guy, Juan, stepped up and took the surviving members. Now, the rest of them are all dead. Nobody wants to go home to their wife or kids. There's how many are the surviving members? Again, he's got four or five guys on a boat and one coxswain, whatever that is. One ship sunk, totally fucked at the bottom of the sea. You got So the crew would be like, Juan, listen to me, Juan. See, Magellan's dead. He was our mentor. He was the mastermind behind all this. Juan, you think you can fill his shoes? He's dead. We should just go home to our wife and kids. And Juan's like, no, no. Now nah, we can do it. We can complete the great man's work. I'm not buying it. Are you buying this? I mean, maybe Juan wanted to continue on, but let's just look at the rest of the crew. Again, Magellan's dead. Most of them are dead. How many ships did they even start with? One of the two remaining. Well, I thought there were actually more, uh, three or four, but let's just assume there were two. Well, one's sunk, one's gone. I think somebody like Doyle from Sling Blade would have stepped up. Remember, remember that real nasty guy Doyle in Sling Blade with Billy Bo Bob Thornton, and when his his friends came over and they played in that band out on the on the porch and everything, and then he got all drunk and pissed off. I think somebody like Doyle would have stepped up and yelled at Juan, but but in this case, like Doyle says, Randy, we ain't got no band, Randy. We ain't got no lyrics. We ain't got no gigs, paying gigs at least, Randy. Somebody said, Juan. We only got one ship. We ain't got no navigator. We ain't got no Med Magellan anymore, Randy. We're, Juan, we're going home, okay? You take this ship and Captain Jack Sparrow and complete this. We're going home to our wife and kids, Juan. Oh, they would have continued with most dead, Magellan dead. Bullshit, not Nilk. Do a better job of your story next time. Okay, I sat here for a few minutes and there is another possibility, more likely, and I alluded to it earlier, but let's continue with it. This Juan maybe is not the reckless asshole that wants to continue the great man's work and continue to risk everyone's lives without Magellan, the mastermind, still being alive. Maybe Juan was the smartest one of all, and he gathered the remaining crew together. Y'all gather around here. Y'all come over here now. 
Now, most of us are dead, <laughs> diseased. We got one ship. As I see it, Juan said, as this, Juan may have been the greatest leader of all. He said, that we got three choices, folks. Option one, says Juan, we continue to do our duty. We complete what the great man wanted, and we get back on this ship here, this broken down piece of shit, and we continue with the circumnavigation, and we do our job. And you know what's going to happen, crew, if we do that? We're all going to end up dead, diseased, or bunga bunga to death. But let me present the options objectively. That's number one. If you want to get back on that ship, you're a dead man. Number two, we all go home to our wives and children, and we tell the truth and say we couldn't complete the job. And then we're thrown out of every sailor's bar and our maritime compatriots, they spit on us, and we're completely blacklisted from ever getting a job again. We could go home and tell the truth. Or option three, we go home right now, and we just tell them we did it. What we tell them, we just lie and, yeah, lie and say we did it. Though they're going to need proof. Again, video evidence doesn't exist. Anybody, did you bring trinkets on board? All right, that's the trinkets we got in the Philippines. We don't have to go there. We just have to present trinkets that prove we were there. If we can get enough trinkets that represent the places we're supposed to go, we're going to come back and we're all going to be synced to the same bullshit story. And you know what? We're going to get paid. We had fun with this sort of thing when we were first grade truthers, whether it be the celebrities covering the one eye and the Jay-Z hand symbols and the, ooh, shoo, be quiet, a vow of silence. I mean, look, this, all this stuff was necessary when we started a long journey a long time ago that basically said the world is a very strange place and not at all what is presented by authority or by the news, for example. Now, look, the, they're saying, oh, we're quiet. These idiots don't know anything. We, let's not change this topic video up. But the point is, okay, there's, they, they've, there's a few things they have to keep their mouth shut about. Fine. In terms of how reality works, uh, they're about all as smart there as Mr. Bean. Now, I'm saying let's take this concept and apply it to the explorers, potentially. How long is this creepiness or what is considered the vow of silence been around? To me, it probably goes right back to the explorers themselves. Let's play this scenario out. Let's go back to the basics and let me pose this question. It does tie into the explorers. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. One may pose the question, how often do politicians lie or not tell the truth? What's the percentage of what comes out of their mouth? You know what the better question is? Has a politician over a certain level ever told the truth, and I mean ever, a president, a U.S. senator, a governor, when it comes to the welfare of the American people or how tax dollars are going to be used, whatever, if it comes to matters of importance, the better question is, has any one of them ever in the last hundred years told the truth? And I mean ever. That is a legitimate question. Not, what did you have for dinner last night? Well, I had hot dogs. They're going to tell you the truth. Like, well, they'll probably lie about that. They'll probably tell you it was cheap when they they bought Kobe beef, $4,000 on the American taxpayer. They'll even lie about that. Other than the trivial, we all agree it's possible they've never told the truth. All right, let's go back in time from here. Now, would you think that trend of leadership lying to the people, do you think we could take that back in time and apply it to kings and queens? Extrapolate it back, to use a term incorrectly? Do you think that's going out on a limb? Or all these people were all straight up, oh, these people would, would never lie. <laughs> These people would never lie. To look at the mug on this, this, this is like Louis or something of France. Talk about uh, the horrors of when they showed the woman the picture for the arranged marriage. Look at the mug on this thing. Can you imagine being stuck in a bed with that thing? Um, uh, I would say that it's probably likely, although I'm going out on the limb, that this group also lied to their people and subjects. So you kind of know where I'm going here, guys. How could we say that any of these explorations even happened? It's not a stretch or going out on a limb. Look at the people we're dealing with here. Take space, for example. All it is is a lie agreed upon, whether it be doled out from the creepy table and everybody has to answer to the creepy table, or countries are somewhat independent, but they collude together. No one's going to act independently. I think it's more about the creepy table, but it could be the latter. If it's the creepy table, then it would be... Um, Creepy Table Awards, first object into Cake in a Lake space, goes to Russia. And then the rush continues. Yay! It's like winning the NBA draft. First man to walk on the cheese Cake in a Lake moon goes to the United States. It might be doled out from the Creepy Table. 
and then the countries have to go back and execute it. Or it could be a negotiation if it's it's a, an act of collusion where Russia says, um, well, I'll tell you what, you give us the first object up there, we'll call it Sputnik, we'll take credit for that, we'll give you the first man, tit for tat, and then you, we're going to take this, we're going to have the first object on Venus, you and Matt Damon can have the first object on Mars. It's in a, either, at the very minimum, it's an agreed-upon collusion. Well, maybe what these... <laughs> What these explorers did, the countries did the same thing. Well, we want to take claim for, for finding the Americas. And then that was Christopher Columbus. We want to take claim for, for finding the West and East Indies. You get this. We're going to create a story about a guy named Magellan. It could be doled out or it could be a collusion, a, a, an agreed upon lie. Why does everybody bow down and think all this stuff has to be for real when the entire structure of what's called leadership has been lying to everybody for thousands of years? It doesn't make any sense. So going back to the stories associated with each explorer, what's more likely? That the leadership that is proven to lie in kings, queens, emperors, dukes, earls, presidents, premiers, prime ministers, every one of them lie, 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 99 point whatever percent. What's more like, oh, but this is real. Every explorer, per what they did for their country, that, that actually happened. What's more likely that these people did go out in these, these dark ships with their lemons and limes to, to fight off scurvy? Or maybe, I'm, I'm, of course I'm putting it on the table, that uh, as most things present in this world, it's a lie agreed upon. Now, there's a few problems with this line of thinking, I admit. I mean, Brazil speech, speech. Brazil speaks Portuguese today. Eventually, the Portuguese ships did get there. I mean, it's not easy to, to make a, get a whole country to speak the language of a little old country back in Lisbon. Eventually, the trade routes developed. Roops, what? The, I can't speak. The trade routes did develop. Uh, half of China was sink to opium. I mean, of course, eventually, we somehow, what we call William Penn and his Quakers made it to Pennsylvania. The ships did go out, okay? But how convenient... The exploration story is with these these incredible journeys assigned to certain explorers, of which the name becomes very famous, and the exploits become almost too much for one man. Then thousands or tens of thousands of statues and busts and books and movies and every kid in elementary school in the United States lead, learns about all the explorers and Balboa and Cortez and Mel Magellan and Ponce de Leon and Christopher Columbus. And it's just, eh. we know how the not milk does business when it looks or smells a little bit like a presentation. It is a presentation. That's all I'm saying. Okay, there's another possibility with the explorers. Back to this image. Oh, you know, we're keeping secrets and all the secret societies and all the one eye covering. Well, what was the guild for the damn ship captains, right? But, you know, here's a look, guys, I'm just, we're just having fun with this, right? Obviously, the not milk presentation in anything doesn't add up. I'm going to be able to poke holes in anything it presents. Let's just have fun with it. There's another possibility of keeping secrets. What was the ship captain's guild, that little sect of the Freemasons, whatever, and they kept quiet? What do I mean? Well, you've heard of like Brotherhood Among Thieves, right? God, who was the first explorer that set out and within 10 minutes of sailing out said, well, we don't have to really do any of this. Nobody's going to know where we, <laughs> where we went or where, what we did, as long as we keep synced to the same bullshit story. So maybe a quiet brotherhood among ship captains. Again, a little subset of the Freemasons. And they said, we're going to tell, they're going to they're gonna lie to their own king and queen, perhaps. Oh, you wanted me to go try to find Greenland or Iceland or whatever they say might be up there? Oh, I'll go. And the guy sets out and he just sails five miles upriver and beaches the ship and has a picnic. When are we supposed to be back? Four months. And they just be quiet about it. They came back and said, we found it. They didn't even go five, they didn't even go five miles off coast. Oh, guys, I'm just, we're just having fun with this. But do, on the other side, do I believe every one of these explorers did what Wiki, 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 Wikipedia and the Not Nilk says? Of course not. So I'll take it to the other extreme. Maybe the queens and kings and dukes and earls were all fooled, and there was like a quiet brotherhood among ship captains, kind of like the Priory of Sion in Angels and Demons in the Da Vinci Code. And there was a ship captain and an explorer that figured out first, before all of them, back 1200, and said, why do we have to go anywhere? Why do we have to risk our lives? 
what we need to do is just sync our stories and then just say we went. And then maybe that went on for 400 years. Who knows? We've seen stranger things in this reality, haven't we? Matt, that's awfully devious to think that way. I mean, what kind of an evil, sick mind could even think along those lines? If you were that ship captain in 1200, you would have devised the idea that we don't have to go anywhere and we just have to lie about the story. You would have been the guy. No, no, you know what? I, I, I think like not milk. Okay? I have learned to think, what would an evil entity do trying to fool and trick real spiritual beings? Yeah, if you want to call that a weird way of thinking about things, I have developed that. You have to understand your enemy. Sometimes you have to think like your enemy. Uh, first off, no, I wouldn't take my ship out and lie that we went and we really didn't go. I wouldn't be in this business in the first place. Which finally brings us to the famous route around the world. Again, remember the last section or whatever he wasn't even alive for. Remember the boat I showed you, that roundish boat. They said Christopher Columbus, four mile per hour. No, no, sorry, 9.2 with the right winds. Remember that? So we're going to assume he might be a little slower, three mile per hour. Hey, fine, here it is. You leave Portugal, Lisbon. You hug the African coast. Um, then you head down towards the eastern end of the South American continent. Of course, his line puts him on a perfect trajectory to pick up the middle of the South American continent on the east side and head right down the coast. Now, look, I, uh, this, I guess, has been done before, maybe with his lodestones, whatever that is, and his sext sextants, and you can see his star charts or whatever. We can assume somebody's done this before, so he kind of knows where he's going. To me, it would be a little bit more believable if the line was a little bit more all over the place. Not that, it, how would anybody know where he went? The damn boat didn't have no GPS or low jack, did it? Did it have a low jack chip? So how do they know where the route was anyway? He could have been, he could have gone around Cuba five times drunk. He don't, okay. Eventually, they made their way down, so the line gives him credit. And then at the bottom of South America, I guess he just magically finds... Because, again, there's no charts for it. He's credited with discovering it, the Straits of Magellan, where somehow he cuts, you know, five days off the trip by cutting across the tip by going inland in some way. It's not a river, but, okay, we looked at that earlier. Maybe it was just dumb luck. He thought he was hugging the tip of South America when it actually extended out. We'll just chalk that up to dumb luck. Okay, the problem is when he comes around the uh, bottom tip of South America, this is where it's completely uncharted, folks. Now, it would be completely uncharted. Oh, where do we go now, Ferdinand, Mr. Magellan? Oh, I don't know. I head west. Oh, he just heads out west. Do you know? Do you do you have any idea how large the the amount of the body of water is from the tip of South America? say, to getting into the neighborhood of, say, Japan, how many weeks or months that would be. We, we, again, it's not charted. What's, that, what's your lodestone doing for you now? What's your sextant doing for you now? What's your star, star? You don't have the star charts. Nobody's ever done it. It doesn't make any sense. What, maybe they asked the Bunga Bunga people at the end of South America, you got star charts so we can get out uh, past Hawaii and get out to Japan this way? Maybe the Bunga Bunga people provided star charts. This is where it starts to break down. Just magically head west, and you'll eventually, I guess, well, how do you know he'll find the, the, the East Indies? The East Indies, um, mostly Indonesia, but other islands uh, above Australia, uh, kind of to the um, east of India. Uh, a variety of islands are called the East Indies. He's known to have found them somehow. I just, just ran into an island where luckily, the, the, the I guess everybody wanted to trade whatever they had, little trinkets to give out to the indigenous, and he didn't find the Bunga Bunga people. He would have never made it out of that island. Then he sort of goes between Indonesia and um, I guess within 500 to 1,000 miles of Australia and just happens to know somehow to to sail... Uh, towards the tip of Africa to make his way back up towards Lisbon. I have a problem with this part as well. Again, the first part, we assume it's been done hundreds of times before. Uh, Europe to the western coast of Africa to South America. Okay, He's not the first to do it. We'll chalk it up. They knew the star charts, or they had the sextant, whatever. But see, when he comes in the other side there, um, and okay, I hear you, Splat Turfers. He maybe just say he pulled the boat up over the ice wall and jumped in the water on the other side. They pulled the boat up physically over the ice wall, let it go. He, he then through the there's no existing charts, right? 
from the East Indies to the bottom tip of Africa, or is there? Maybe that maybe they had been going around that way, and he just had to reverse it when he came the other from the other direction over the ice wall. I don't know. I have a little bit bigger problem with this. I mean, again, I, I'm not I'm not going to go off to Cambridge and Oxford to study uh, how much exploration had been done in star charting from say the year 1000 through the year 1500, where he's basically doing this. But there are sections of this where there aren't. It, there's nobody's ever done it before. It's like his own version of Smokey and the Bandit. They go and do what they say can't be done. He's bound it up. Maybe he's running cores and cores light in the back of the damn ship. But there's sections where there was there is no charting. So I guess you just hope for the best. And you head out. Do you have any idea how massive the Pacific Ocean is from the bottom of South America out towards Hawaii, towards Japan? I mean, you could fit like five United States, 10 United States in there. I mean, okay, well, I have some some issues. At least the splat turfers would agree with me. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I don't want a banner ad. I can't say the word. Give me another hobo code then. At least they're with me if, if most of you guys think this is horseshit and you believe every bit. Not How many people here believe every bit of the, <laughs> of the Magellan story in Wikipedia? This is a group of people that doesn't exactly bow down to Wikipedia very often. But at least the splat turfers are with me. Saying that, Matt, in that story of Magellan, there's no mention of ice wall, no mention of nothing. Therefore, I must assume, like you said, one of two things, that nothing happened at all, and it's just a story, and the guy never even existed, or he's a stable diffusion character, or like you said, maybe uh, this is a remote possibility, but maybe people like Magellan and Magellan himself lied to their own kings and queens. I mean, volunteered for the job. I'll go explore here. Oh, you want me to go here or there with no intention of going of going anywhere or doing anything maybe let's just have fun with this let's see how it plays out so portugal 1500 and something what do they have a king a queen nobody knows because nobody knows no portuguese famous kings and queens like we know others from around the world throughout history we know in the united states everybody's heard of king richard the lionheart and we know the louis in france the louis louis and we know even isabella in spain but Portugal must feel very inadequate, inept, and impotent because nobody knows no famous Portuguese kings and queens and dukes and earls. But whatever it was, they said, oh, Magellan, you, we want to be the first. We, we need to keep up with France and the UK and Germany and the Netherlands. We need, to, we need to be first to circumnavigate the globe. You think you can do it? Magellan's, of course we can do it. We're ready to do it now. When we, we get back, we're going to get paid. Oh, will you, oh, you get back. You'll be paid like those precious stones that were given to Conan the Barbarian in the first movie. You'll get paid when you get back. Okay, we'll go do it. Load up with load up supplies, lemons, limes, all this shit on the, and then all they do, maybe, maybe, they just sail five miles up river and spend time alone in some field somewhere, frolicking around with themselves. You know, maybe they, maybe some of them crossed over to that other lifestyle and just did that stuff for five and a half months or whatever. The problem is when you come back, all they they were frolicking around on land, pretending they were at sea for two years or whatever. They're hunting deer, getting fat, living the good life. The problem is when you come back to your king and queen and you've lied about it, you better look like you've been at sea for a year and a half. And they almost forgot to put on their makeup. They say, shit, how do we fake scurvy? How do, where's that charcoal from the stove or whatever? Put that black shit under my eyes. Do, we got to lose 10 pounds in 10 days. We got to look like we're starving. We've been frolicking around, exploring other lifestyles, hunting deer. Guys, I know this last part here was ridiculous, but was it ridiculous? Was it more ridiculous than ridiculous stories on Wikipedia that all have repeating themes and scripts and screwing over of indigenous population? And it's some, in, in other words, what I try to do is present what seems like the absurd and to try to turn what initially seemed like the absurd into something that is more plausible than actually what appears in Wikipedia. Have we done that here? I don't know. But I assure you, very few listening to the words coming out of my mouth believe in the accuracy of the Wikipedia presentation. If you liked diving into fake stories about explorers, there's a lot more we can do. Let me know in the comments. Thanks.